Welcome back to Limbus Company Daily Mirror Dungeon. We're continuing with our you doing the second mirror dungeon. And um I know it's only the second one, but I think I think it's as good a time as ever. Do a little something do something a little silly. Yeah, there we go. Take that, take that. And I think by that, I mean, of course, I mean, it's the obvious thing to do. It's what anyone in Project Moon Community does anytime anything releases. And that's fair to do a solo run. Now, the cool thing here is we can actually just take a single person. No other passives. Now, I'll do that to start out with just because why not? We'll take that stuff. Why not? But it just Hong Lu versus the world. Now, this Hong Lu, I think, might just honestly be like this is one of the strongest tank units in the game. Simply because he's got as much HP, he's got the same stagger threshold as Encorp Mersault, but he can actually win clashes and he's able to heal himself pretty well. He's got Sloth, Gluttony, Pride, which I think means he just physically can't use any of his egos? I think. I actually don't, I don't remember Dimensional Refraction. Why do I keep on calling Dimensional Refraction? No, Dimension Shredder. Gluttony and Pride. Oh, so he can do that one, but that's it. The only thing he can do. So, starting out, we defend, so we get an amp tool, so we start getting the passive healing. Neutral blunt, that's good. I think you're, he's weak to slash, yes. Now, there's something you can get from Stardust that makes it so this becomes a lot easier. Unfortunately, I don't have that. Not yet, at least. One day, one day. So, for now, I'm going to try it without. And, you know, if this run doesn't work, if I seem to have too much trouble with this, then I think I'll just wait till I have gotten the thing I want from the Stardust tree. And then I'll try it again, because then I think it'll be a lot more possible. We're going to see what EO gifts we get, because I chose, a, like, a Rupture-based one there to start out with, because of the fact that, well, Hung Lu sure does have Rupture. Yeah, now he's at two ampules, so we don't want any more than two ampules anything more is dangerous because four or more ampules kills you from what i've heard it's bugged and it sometimes like leads you at one hp and doesn't kill you or something weird like that but as far as i care i'm not risking that who is the safest we can get from guarding though because he can get one from his passive but he can only get a single one from his passive so as long as we only guard twice we'll be in a good spot that's nice yeah, with two ampules still means he heals 10% of his HP every turn. Which is probably enough to counteract a lot of stuff. Okay, that guy's dead. That's good. And yeah, 21 HP healed every turn. That is good. And, I mean, because of the fact we can actually use Dimension Shredder, we'll be able to even build further upon the Rupture, possibly, in longer fights. But this unit's survivability, like, that's the big thing. Of course, if he gets staggered, he'll still probably die. Which is very worrying. It's why the whole thing about just being able to negate a stagger sounds really good. That's, like, the one thing Encorp Mersault has over K. Hong Lu. And that's the fact that he that Enmer Assault is able to reduce his stagger threshold or increase decrease stagger threshold or whatever the terminology is. I still don't get that great. Oh, this guy. I've I've seen this guy before. He's so awesome. Cause it's um It's funeral. So last time I did this, I did tell the truth and I got an ego gift from this. So I'm gonna say it passed and see what happens. Thank you, I should get going now. The orientation is probably starting soon. It spoke, wearing the coat it was holding in one hand. I won't need this anymore. And the butterfly walks away to carry pollen. We can only wish that at least a small beam of sunlight shines over its destination. 50 cost gain. Cool. That's honestly probably better, because the EU gift wasn't anything great. It was just like, oh, it's 7 plus charge. You gain one haste. Every like, that was it. So 50 cost is probably still better. Uh, we'll see. There are no negative outcomes, though, so either way with that one, it seems good. I think that's the only, that's the first time I've actually seen a duplicate of the new events. I've been lucky, I guess. 
So start out. I mean, I think our strategy is going to be the same in both of these fights. Start out defending. Then. Yeah, this raid, it might be a little bit of a long run. Um, That's fine, though. Okay, are you going to pull up your defense? There you go. Waiting to the last possible second to do it. Alright. Um, like this, and then Decay Blade should go well. Well enough, at least. And as long as we don't take too long to kill the guys, we'll be able to heal up the full before the next fight. Hmm. Taking a lot of damage. There's definitely some passives that could be very beneficial. Pretty much anything that actually like heals is always nice. Anything that uses any of the sins Hong Lu has. And we don't really have a way to get any of the other sins without um What is saying? Oh yeah, without using um Ego Gift to get more sins. Dimension Shredder, this is pretty spamble with this build, so we might as well use it every once in a while, just deal some damage. I guess it does reduce sanity, that's a little bit of a bad thing. Because we want to absolutely make sure we win our clashes. The numbers issue is going to be a problem, because of the fact you're expected to five people this early, the fights are already very sided towards the enemies. Longlu can manage though. I guess the thing is we can't stall for time, can we? Because we can't like safely defend. I guess as long as we don't use the defend. If we do one side defend, then it shouldn't trigger. But if we like clash with the defend, then that's when we'll have issues. Okay. Taking some one side attack still, that's fine. I impede the intruder. Excise target. This one should die. He's gaining some charge because he's hitting enemies with negative status effects. Thanks to the passive from the thing. Oh, right. He can get revived by that. That's also a really important thing, isn't it? Because dimensional predator's passive is... Yeah, when HP falls to zero first time during battle, spend all charge and heal in proportion to the amount spent. Cannot heal over 25%. So if we, if we can get some EO gifts to get more charge, that also could be really nice for us. I think my general plan is turn 1, just defend, turn 2, defend an EGO, then turn 3 onwards, we just clash. I think that's probably like the best way overall to go about doing it. It's a very simple plan, and of course we'll change it if need be. Because it's very possible need could be. Even without any, like, actual EU gifts for giving him charge, he's still getting a lot from the passive, which is nice. And there's only one guy left now. Pretty much any time. I mean, it's, he gains charge from hitting enemies with negative status effects, which he'll have most of the time thanks to, like, the rupture stuff, I think. And there's the victory. That was, like, a six turn, six, seven turn fight. Not looking great. But we'll see. We can get another event here. It's the Toad. We'll take the Eye. It doesn't really help us much because it's Kramer Burst, but we'll take it. And Blunt we this, I think this is just going to be G Corp Manager again. This is my fourth run, and it's going to be my fourth time seeing G Corp Manager. I don't know if there is any other options here. But they won't listen to a bug. Rough buddy. Oh, you're... Okay, in this situation, when you'd be defending against the defense, which basically means you won't do anything, then you Dimension Shredder first turn, and you double defend second turn, I think. Because we only get the ambulance if he actually clashes with his defense. And defense do not clash against each other. And his defense would not be activated in time, because it'll wait till the very last moment to use it. Target loses SP. That's a little sad. But it's fine. Yeah, we're all- we're still doing fine. And now we can do our double defend to get our healing going. Yeah. Okay. He's doing SP damage to us, and because of the fact we're just defending, we're not going to be gaining any sanity this turn. But this fight should go on long enough that we get back to max sanity before we have to progress to the next floor. 
and we've got our ampules now, so we're ready to start heading back. We're only going to take two one-sided attacks here. Very good. Weak to blunt, but they're neutral to slash, so slash is still decent. I don't have any pierce, so... I mean, I guess I would have pierced if I used um, from my ego, but the actual main identity itself doesn't have any pierce. So no worries in that front. And there we go. This is a little worse of a situation. We'll be taking a couple more attacks. You've got your onslaught command. That's your weird, like, two target mass attack, isn't it? Might have been. I don't remember. It might be. Cryer might actually just be it, though. Especially based on that camera, how it's zooming out. I think that's the mass attack thing. I do really like how you don't get any of the ampules from the skills, though. You don't really need to worry about using his skills. Otherwise, it would have been something... It would be a case like Reindeer Ishmael and, like, oh, mind whip someone's dead because of that. But with self-damage. Stuff like Auto Battle would have a lot of issues with it. Although I do find that funny. I do hope we get more Reindeer Ishmael type absolute like disasters if you aren't paying attention. Because even though I don't auto battle too much, I still don't pay enough attention most of the time. And it's just a one on one now. So we'll finish him off quick. And easy. Yep, he's staggered. And we won't be quite full HP, but we'll be pretty close. Victory. Oh, another good thing is, because we only have one person, the shops are going to be really good for us. Because no matter what, Hong Lu is the one we're going to be changing the deck of. Oh, Dust to Dust is new, I think. Start about inflict two burn and two burn count on all enemies. When Sloth Resonance inflicts two burn and two burn count on... All enemies. So it's just more burn. And these are just sinking. So none of this helps me at all. I'm going to take this one because I don't, don't think I've taken this one. And it doesn't seem too, like, particularly great. Com wow, comp participation limit's been increased. That's nice. We'll be able to include more combatants now. These are both 29s. I'll go for the slash because we've got stronger slash Three stuff with... We've got both Slash and Blunt, but his primary and his tertiary are the Slash ones, while his secondary is the Blunt one. So it's more favoring of Slash. Oops, this fight again. I think it was the same fight as the one we did before. Okay, this is a counter, so... We do this so we can actually get something done with the first turn. No re Defending against the counter also would do nothing. And this way, because Dimensional Spread or Target's first in the back, we're not even going to trigger the counter, so we're only going to take three attacks this first turn. Although we won't, we won't be able to get our Ampules built up until second turn. That should be fine. These guys have, do have slum Slash attacks. The Pierce attack is nice to see because it does almost nothing. No, we only took two attacks because more of them were defending than I thought. We're not going to be able to build up any Ampules here either. Hmm. That's a little unfortunate. We'll be able to kill this guy, though. Actually, we might not be able to. Hmm. Not great. I think we stagger here, yeah. Unless we... Try doing something like this. We might be able to take out that guy with that. I think this will just stagger him, because they're weak to slash. Yeah, so this guy should just get staggered. Now, our sanity is not doing too great now because we've just used this twice back to back. But let's see. 50 damage. Yep, that's a stagger. That's very good. That guy was using some strong or some decently strong slash attacks, which would have been a nightmare. And he counters. That's fine. It's a Pierce. Pierce does nothing. Here's a slash, though. We take it. Oh, you've got slashes now. You do that. You do that. 
then you do that. We'll take this as a one-sided attack. Otherwise, I think we'll be fine. We're not getting any ampules up here just because it is unfortunate for us that we, we just can't afford to get hit and trigger the ampules. That's the issue. We cannot get staggered. And here's another one of these, our sanity. His, very low, very low. Huzzah, off we go. Oh, he's not staggered. Oh, that's not good. I guess he wasn't going to be staggered no matter what. Wasn't that low. This guy's dead, though. So we're doing a little better. Let's attack. Okay, not staggered. Not staggered. Ooh. Okay, this one we don't defend. Do we even defend here at all? That's the question. Hmm. These are neutrals. Yeah, the sanity is getting bad. We need to deal with that guy, though. Then we'll take this as a one-sided attack. Ooh. Not looking good, folks. Mm -hmm. If we do this, we'll get a little power-up, I think, because of how it works. We'll throw this here, though. And we'll defend this one, maybe? Oh no. I think we just lose, yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah, mortal peril. It sure is. Okay, wait, he gets revived by his charge, though. He didn't get healed at all, though. Did he, did he had charge, didn't he? He's not? Did he have, like, one charge, so he got revived at one? Could have called reinforcements? We really should have, huh? Same rewards. We get five Starlight. I am not going to spend five modules I'm on this. An exhibition without claiming rewards. Yeah, we don't need it. Hmm. Well, you gotta do more. You know what? I want to make this a longer episode, but I don't think we'll get a schedule. Well, let's let's try doing that, but for Mirror One. I haven't done Mirror One at all yet, so this will be our little Mirror One expedition. Out with a flask, and we'll do the same type of thing though. Only take you. It should go better because. Well, there's less people here. And we'll just see how uh, Mirror Dungeon 1 looks now. Because it'll, it'll be different. It'll be similar to Mirror Dungeon 2. Feels weird. That's for sure. And I think... These events are going to be the ones we've seen before still, yeah. Yeah, you can only start with three people anyways. We're probably, you're probably going to get the tickets on later for Lourdes 2. Probably get them the first ticket on floor 2 and then the second ticket on floor 3, though. Start with the defend. Even if these are easier fights, it's better to not risk it, because if we get the ampules running, we'll just keep on going into fights being high HP. Especially since we were able to dodge the actual slash attack there. Nice. Like that. Only taking a single one-sided attack, and that's a pierce one, so it's all good. I think if there was, like, I wonder if they'd be, like, include some sort of mechanic to make, like... Not, oh no, you did. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, some sort of mechanic just to, like... I guess if there was some sort of way to make it so you start with more speed dice, like, through some method in, um, mirror dungeons when you only have one person. I don't know what, though. Maybe you can make that, like, a shop thing, too. Like, oh, purchase this person to the second speed die, or something goofy like that. Like, the speed passive from Ruin, not that you just purchase it mid-run. Of course, the, when you get down to it, that's the big issue with soloing. It's the first few turns. Once you, If you've got the same amount of speed dies as the enemy, even with one person, you're at roughly an even playing field. Kind of. Assuming you're, like, winning clashes and stuff, that's the, the one thing. Because you've only got one HP pool. I actually don't think there's any reason to bother 
ampuling up for these guys. There's only two of them. That may be overconfidence, but... Overconfidence. Slow and insidious killer, I know. But we also only took like 10 damage this fight. And yeah, that guy's dead. So it's 3 speed dice versus 2 speed dice. So we're doing a little well. Woohoo, this side, the winner's side. And we're just building up. Every fight, we're just gaining like a bunch of resources. Thanks to Travel with Flask. So we'll actually be able to use some of the other egos. We'll be able to use this mass attack occasionally. Hopefully, we get like the lighter if we really want to lean into using a Kong Lu's mass attack. Um, this is a power up, I guess. It's not a great one because you don't have lust, so it's not its maximum possible like benefit, but it's still two damage up to Hong Lu every turn. Which you can imagine, pretty nice. And this just deals damage to everyone every turn. Sure. Or all enemies every turn. Not self damage, luckily. We are getting less cost from battles here so i wonder if things will be cheaper in the shop to make up for that or if it's just going to be that i'm barely going to be able to afford anything we'll see which of the options it goes for i mean there is only two shops in total that's another thing to keep in mind assuming there is guaranteed a second floor and a third floor one which i think there will be based on the patterns i've noticed so far You do that, and you do that. Fair. We'll use the Ego. Might as well. He's neutral slash, I think? Because he's weak to blunt and resistant to fierce. So it'll be good damage. Look at the passive going in case- Oh no, he's weak to slash. Oh, because this is the act. Yeah. I was getting confused, because the actual G-Corp guy is weak to slash, but the, like, Reminisced one from the actual like dungeon third floor, Kanto one dungeon third floor, I should say. Um, that is weak to blunt, I think. So it's, it's slightly different. I just get a confused lot though because they look identical. I've had similar confusions with some of the lobotomy ego enemies, the lobotomy egos, and like the reawakened ones have um, slightly different resistances and weaknesses. That guy dead. And this guy dead. Yeah, so far, Kaypor Pong Lu very much capable of soloing this dungeon, it seems. Because he can just heal himself. That's the main thing. And there's not too many dangerous slash things. It really is just the J-Core people to worry about. Because they've got. They're the only people who've got, like, decent slash, really. Not having to take damage. Bleed doesn't help us. Not able to just start with 20% less HP, we'll take that. And let's see, where's the shop there? So we'll go... Probably just this path, because we'll be able to take them slash things. Yeah, that'll work. If we really want to, we could purchase like a person just to use their passives at the shop. Which definitely, like, could have its reasons. That's not worth it. That is a defensive thing, therefore, the ampule would not trigger. I guess this is, like, semi clickbait this video because it's gonna be like oh hong lu solo and like i guess technically it will be a hong lu solo by the end but like not the one you'd expect based on the start of the video we'll see how long the video ends up being though if it, if it deceives people i think it is a little funny bait and switch but i think it is i did want to go back to mirror dungeon one two i probably shouldn't have done it so soon but I just really wanted to try the Hong Lu solo to see how it goes. And of course, my general consensus being, um, we just gotta wait till we can actually get the Starlight bonus. Which will take a little bit, because it'll take like, what, like 15 runs in total or something like that? 15 more runs, if I want to get all the Starlight stuff just to reach there.
Because you get if you get a hundred starlight per run and you need like what is it, one fifty, two fifty, five hundred, seven hundred fifty, something like that. Which is a couple. This is rupture, this is nice. You don't have plumes, so you took the sanity, but I don't want to spam the button, so Tweet deal with that. it. Less drops does mean there's we're gonna have less chances to just mess up Hong Lu's death. In, a, in the positive manner, of course. Um, defend. Yeah. So we've gotten to the point where we actually finally have enough bloom to be able to possibly use this mass attack. I don't know if I want to. I don't think I want to. Simply because, um, these guys all resist. Oh no, these guys don't resist blunt, but still. It's better to save it for when we actually need it. And for people who are weak to blunt, aka the Inquisitors. Or the actual, like, other K Corp people. So it'll be a little bit of a K Corp v K Corp fight on the third floor. I don't know, I think, I'm pretty sure the only change to the actual enemies that show up Mirror Dungeon 1 is the removal of Baba Yaga, otherwise I think it'll be the exact same. Definitely, actually, that's actually probably really good for this run, because Baba Yaga might be a little rough with the with, with Hong Lu. With Mr. Hong. Like that, there we go. We gotta just make. I guess we should probably be careful about the gluttony because we won't always want to make sure you we've just got the five gluttony. I think that was also partially the issue last time. We used ego too much. We didn't have enough gluttony to actually trigger his passive in order to revive him. That's something that just completely slipped my mind. We need to be careful that we don't spend too much of the gluttony with the ego. Therefore, when we see gluttony, go for it, even if there are better options, because we don't need maximum damage output here. Hong Lu can outlast anybody, pretty much. If it does come to a war of attrition. Thick rumbling hum. See, it seems like it's just the same shot. Hong Lu skill replaced and just stuff like that. What can we do? Oh no, it's the same costs. Oh, that's unfortunate. Do you want to change the skill 1 to a skill 2? Not really. I think we just leave. That's a little sad. But I guess it makes enough sense. Although really, like, there's like no way you're gonna have that much cost, so it's really like you. There's no reason to go to the first shop ever. It feels in Mirror Dungeon One. Just you get to the second one. Yeah, this is the recollected G Corp manager. So you can see he's weak to blunt, while the normal one's the one that's weak to slash. Yeah. Yeah. And. At this rate, I think it will. This video will be a little shorter than you expect of an actual run of Mirror Dungeon 2. So I think that may just people may just see that and be like, "Oh, it's going to be a failure, isn't it?" I know that's what I'd think. Okay. Dimension shredded. Huzzah! We've also got enough resources that we could corrode this if we want to. I forget what benefits the corrosion one gives. Isn't it just like more dimension? Status effect, dimensional rift. Also, I did want to look. Okay, it is just four dimensional rift. I've been misremembering that. Yeah, corrosion. Spend. Oh, you can spend 10 shards to get two more fragile and two more dimensional rift. Which is not a great benefit. That's for sure. Okay, onslaught command, that's fine. Doesn't do too much to us. Oh, we lost that glass. Alright. Didn't take too much damage from him, but still, a little bit of a shocker. I guess these guys are... What level are they? Level 30? So yeah, I'm on level, I think. Yeah, level 30. Because there's no level of tiles or anything. Still a very weird change, it feels, because I'm just so used to them. 
I mean, luckily, if luckily if I ever feel nostalgic for the old my mirror dungeons go, I've got I've got a couple, a couple, only a few videos I can see, watch of my own. No, for nostalgia's sake. Very silly. And we'll take the rest space. We don't actually need it. Just leave. He's already at max HP. Weak to Pierce, weak to Sloth. What is weak to Pierce and weak to Sloth that you can fight here? I mean, it's probably just going to be like... Pink Shoes guys? Oh no, Snake Man. Snake Man makes more sense than my guess. On Hidden Flick Paralysis next turn, we can take that. Yeah, we're taking that. And I don't think we need to use our ego here. I'm not really too worried. Oh, he's staggered, so we're not going to get the ambule off. Yeah. We have one ambule. That's good enough for this fight. We'll do this, because this alone will be enough to break the arms. The other two skills aren't going to go through. And now we just do this, I think, and we kill him. He stagger is guaranteed. There's not really any reason to clash against the other one. Although I might as well, but overconfidence is funny. Because it's fine. Victory. I wonder if it's always set, like, which weakness and does it chooses for each thing. Like, every time you see that, that Snake Inquisitor, will it display it as being weak to Pierce and weak to Sloth? Because Sloth isn't its only sin weakness. Or is it actually, like, random or something? Third turn, at least HP, heals HP. Yeah, we'll go for that. More healing. Just in case something goes wrong. Because something could theoretically go wrong. Hopefully it doesn't, but it could. They pry down and then pop path afterwards. 25, 20, 52. That's a big difference. Weak slash weakness. Slash weakness. How could that be then? What's a slash weakness risky encounter from the third floor? Oh, it's just going to be the J-Core people. Yeah, that'll do it. Because one of the risky encounters for the third floor here is just a bunch of J Corps people. Yeah, this one. Just as I thought. We're only going to take two one set attacks here, and they're not going to be too bad. Thankfully, because of the fact one of these guys is going to be countering against nothing. Mm. Do that there and do that there. Like that, yep. Should be good. These guys do not have slash ones. It's the mariachi people who've got the scary slash attack. So as long as they're not here, we should be mostly fine. Yeah, that was a slash attack from the Ting Tang boss, but a minor one at that. Staggered that one. There we go. That's the only one side attack we're taking this turn. I mean, barring this counter we're gonna take. Oh, that counter was a little scary. Thanks to it, it being a slash counter and therefore hitting us for a fair bit of damage. We should be able to heal up before the end of the fight, but... Still... Don't like seeing his HP that low. This... And then you're doing this and that, which is neutral, so I'm not too worried. It's really just the slash attacks I'm worrying about. Everything else chips away, but it's the slash attacks that chip heavily away. I say that as if that isn't, like, an incredibly obvious way to, like, say something like that. Like, yeah, some things chip away. And I'm more, I'm more worried about things that deal more damage as opposed to things that deal less damage. Clearly, intellectual dialogue for, on my part. It doesn't need to be smart talk. You know what I mean. I hope. Yeah. And then this finishes it off. There we go. So much green. It's filling the entire screen with green.
will take that because we have to. <laughs> not because I want it. It does not help. Going is nice. I think I'm gonna go for the skill replacement. Replace the skill one with the skill three. Yeah. Nice. Can't afford anything else. Don't want anything else. Those are the jokes on you Sweet. for that. And now we just stick to the top half of the end because that's the best way to minimize fights taken. We'll take an ab known two normal fights, but also two events. These guys. This is where I do this. I've, I've been saving it up for sp this moment in particular because it's going to hit all three of them and they'll be convenient. Hopefully it'll do, it'll do good damage here. 180, yeah, that's pretty good damage, I think. Yep. And we've got two excised targets here, thanks to the fact that we've increased our chances of getting it by... We've doubled the chances of getting it at any point. There's only one guy left now. So you'll perish. Like a tin can. Then, what do we need the most of? I mean, gluttony for safety. Because that's how we trigger the passive. That's one we gotta make sure we have more than enough of at any point. So that Hong Lu just won't die. Okay, I have no time. Weak to Pierce, weak to Sloth, so probably Snake Man, based on what we've seen on the previous floor. Probably the Snake Man alongside, like, what's just Pekatula? Yeah, that's it. Oh, notice, it says I don't know these Pekatula's weaknesses either. So they've just re- they've just changed Pekatula as a whole, it seems. Oh, 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 yeah. A lot of HP for a Pekatula. What is the scariest thing here? No slash attacks. So there's nothing too scary, so I think I'm just going to defend against the highest speed one here, you. I think it would have been me first anyways. We've got a little more defense, so it'll block some of these attacks. Yeah. Piercing loss is the only attack that it's actually going through. The worst speed got reduced by that. That's fine. Because we can do a little bit of this and lock that one get our ampules running and take not too much damage our we're getting more bind so we won't get in great speed once again that's fine we'll have three speed dice now yep so now we do this i think we ignore you yep We'll deal with that guy last, because we're going to have to break his arm, then actually damage him. And we can do some pretty good amount of damage to these two right now. Yeah, both of those two were staggered, and this guy might just die? No, 13 HP. Yeah, we're getting some bleed, some paralysis. Which I think I should be more scared about than I was. Big size target's still going to do a lot of damage, I think. I clash with it, though. Yeah, like that, that, no, that's bad, like that. Oh no, it's calculated based on paralysis, so this will probably be fine, I think. If I'm understanding that correctly. Like that, should work. Yeah, there we go, the paralysis is gone. And yeah, we won that one perfectly fine because of the fact that paralysis was gone when we actually did the clash. Because paralysis messes up the calculations a wee bit. Okay. Something like this. Okay, all the pack of two lay down. Now we take out his arm. He's weak to the sloth. Yep, there we go, arm down. And now we finish him off proper. I didn't. I wasn't paying attention. What is the boss of this for? Can I tell based on the symbols? I'll check after this fight. I'm just saying that now so that I hopefully like 
keep it in my mind and actually check afterwards. Okay, and finish it off with the Decay Blade. There we go. Victory. And weak to blunt, weak to sloth. Who's weak to blunt and who's weak to sloth that actually appears as a boss in the third dungeon? Hmm. I don't know. I could think about it more, but I don't pay attention to the weaknesses, like, too much. I don't pay attention to the sin weaknesses as much as I do, like, normal weakness types. Close your eyes. Take this, because Leap Bloom is a tattoo. Actually, it is pretty beneficial when you've only got one person. Because it's just building up that the amount of offense level up in a single turn definitely is notable. This is the time for this, I think. Sure, it's not going to hit everyone. But we're also just getting hit by some fierce attacks, so I don't think those ones worry too, matter too much. As long as we don't get too much bleed, that's kind of the issue when you get hit by a lot of K-Corp people. Because bleed builds up, especially if you get a lot of nails and get a lot of bleed count. All those little one or two bleed inflictions is just death. Daggers, nice. Yeah. You resist slash, so I don't think I want to try the funny. Like that, there we go. Then you... Take Corp on Take Corp Violence. Killed that guy. So that's one down. And we're gonna take a couple hits here. Yep. Yeah. That's a lot of nails next turn. Yeah, five nails. Three bleed with a six count. Here's where you can see it building. And the, the, the fear present in it building. We just need to get our ampules going. Because we need to make sure we're healed up for the next fight, because the next fight's the boss. Okay, stagger. Next turn we'll have two ampules, so we'll heal 20 HP. And we've got a lot of bleed, that's that's true, but um we can clash now. Mm, yeah, the is not nice. But I can't really stall for time either, so we're not going to get a chance to heal. Hmm. Yeah, it's even more bleed now. Just kill him with getting this few... I guess he will have no stagger resist next fight, actually, because he's below the threshold. That's good, at least. 91 HP to presumably to end with. So yeah, that actually turned out pretty well, I think. Even if he did lose a lot of HP, he lost just enough HP to be in a decent spot. You, I don't want your healing. I know you can heal me, but I don't want it, so I'll take the bad to Yuga. Or bad in this situation, at least. It's good in other situations. Oh. So it's calendar. Oh? Huh? What? What just happened? The change of the calendar works entirely? Because normally you'd fight the minions first, but now we're actually just being able to attack the calendar immediately. Huh. Well, let's do this to start out with. Get the passive up, start building up charge. Yeah, it's not saying what his passives are either. Do they just fully change how the altar fight works? Because you, you saw the minions there for a second when the fight started, but then they just disappeared and it played a little cinematic like thing of it opening yeah that, this is normally the third phase thing isn't it what, what, what was the text saying is it not going to tell me because i clicked on something okay that's not nice yeah we can't build up ampule because he's just defending 
I'm starting to think this is just a bug, because it seems like we skipped immediately to phase 3 of this fight. Where once we damage him enough, we'll move on to the final phase and kill all those guys. Offer a sinner? Okay. We gotta throw Hong Lu in the machine, or in the fire. We lost 100 HP. Yeah, that's the, that's the third phase one. Because the actual second phase version of that is something completely different. So we're in third phase and he's got no minions. Is he gonna mass attack and kill me? You sense a dangerous glow. No, he's gonna mass attack and not... I'm very confused by what's happening. <laughs> I think that is, that's not how the calendar should have gone. I feel bad because this was like a proper like solo run, but then this big bug happened so I effectively didn't need to fight a final boss. He didn't even attack me once. That's interesting, good to note. Isn't Doomsday Calendar tomorrow's Luxcavation? Or, uh, it's today's now, yeah. Right. Yeah. And we don't get any starlight because there is no starlight. Do I want the battle pass experience stuff? Sure, I'll spend three modules. Might as well. It's a level. That's not bad. We're at 87 now. Just like the bite. Oh cool, more crates. Oh yeah, I completely forgot to mention it, but I did actually get the Rio Chubigos. Wowie. Oh, is it? Oh yeah, there we go. So I've, I've got them now. I'll I'll do something with them eventually. But let's just do our extractions, our daily extractions. See if I get shards, because that's all I'm looking for, because I got the ego just through you buying it with shards. Ryoshu, that would have been nice earlier, but it's not too, but it's nice now, because we're also gonna need to build up Ryoshu shards for whenever Ryoshu gets something else. Yeah. Sinclair on the Sinclair target banner. Who would have thought? And nothing on the Ryoshu Ego banner. Huang Lu. And main event banner thing. We get. Looking like nothing. Mercel. Alright. That's it for today. We. Failed Mirror Dungeon 2 and one question mark in Mirror Dungeon 1. I guess, I mean, I'll take it. We would we probably would have been fine. Because it, it wouldn't, it couldn't be Baba Yaga. So I think we could have taken it no matter what. And if it was actual proper calendar, we would have just built up ampules and been fine. But yeah, thanks for watching. Next time I'll actually do Mirror Dungeon 2 properly now. I just really wanted to try this out. Because, I mean, y you gotta. Thanks for watching. And I will see you next time. Bye.